I'm Dr. David Schneider. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at Panorama Orthopedics and Spine Center. I'm the director of the Shoulder and Elbow Institute, and I'm a shoulder and elbow specialist. We're going to talk about shoulder arthroplasty today. Particularly, we're going to talk about the difference between a primary and a reverse total shoulder. A lot of people have now heard of a reverse total shoulder, and there tends to be some confusion about it, so we're going to go over some of that. When someone has shoulder arthritis, just simple shoulder arthritis, it's because the articular cartilage on the articulating surfaces, either on the ball or the socket, or typically both, are gone. And in this model, you can see they've tried to show that it's lumpy and bumpy, and what typically happens in advanced cases, very large bone spurs form. And that's part of what leaves some patients feeling like they've got a square peg in a round hole. This kind of shows that. When we do shoulder replacement, we end up taking all that arthritis away. So a cut is made in the bone after we make a very careful dissection in the skin and down through the muscles. There's a little interval that we can sneak in there without having to detach muscles. We make a cut in the bone and then a small stem goes down the hollow part. And this is done with, every, with almost every type of shoulder replacement. The stems over time have gotten shorter and shorter because we realize it doesn't have to be a long stem. When you do a regular total shoulder, we simply mount a new ball onto this. And this ball is made of cobalt chrome. And this cobalt chrome is a very hard, very smooth surface and it mounts on top of that ball. So it's a two-part system, what we call modular. Then on a regular total shoulder, we also put in a lining on this side made of polyethylene. And there's a number of different implant companies that do this. And there's different styles of pegs and stems that help this to be very, very strong and to last a very long time. That then couples together and you're left with a very smooth, full range of motion total shoulder. So that's a regular total shoulder. And when we say shoulder replacement, the scientific word for that is arthroplasty. That just means to make a new joint. When we do a reverse shoulder, we're doing it because someone has, in addition to arthritis, they've got a very large rotator cuff tear. And if you did a regular total shoulder in that case, it would fail. So a guy in France named Paul Germont came up with the reverse shoulder. So instead of there being a ball on the humeral side, there's a socket. And this has very strong, very pure polyethylene, it's a type of polymer that mounts onto this reverse ball. So that ball goes where the socket used to be. So when we do a reverse, it kind of captures in there. And even with the rotator cuff gone, someone has very good function of their shoulder. And that happens because the deltoid muscle still anchors on top of this and powers the shoulder. So it's a real breakthrough because it allows us to do a shoulder replacement to get rid of someone's pain and give them motion. That's a reverse. So the reverse is typically reserved for people over their late 50s into their 60s and 70s, and we even do it on healthy patients into their 80s. And it's been a real breakthrough for patients to have good pain relief, excellent function. For both a primary total shoulder and a reverse total shoulder, the patient typically stays overnight in the hospital. Some of our uh, younger patients who are very healthy and want to go home, we let them go home the day of surgery. Most of our patients spend the night at Ortho Colorado Hospital and go home the next day. For both the primary and the reverse patient, they wear their sling for about three or four weeks and they start the physical therapy program about two weeks after surgery. Uh, those patients uh, are able to raise their arm uh, without difficulty, usually by two months, and at three months, they've returned to a pretty active lifestyle. Uh, for our younger patients who are still very athletic and want to do things like golf, play tennis, and go back to mountain biking, road biking, we let them do it really whatever they want at about the four month mark. We found very good results with our patients at the six month mark, and when we see them back at one year, we're just hearing these great stories of patients who've really gotten back to life as they want to lead it.